Hello everyone. Welcome Hi. to the session of Samvad by Get My University. So today we have a very very special session, a special session that every medical aspirant, every medical doctor, every practicing doctor, they are looking forward. They look forward for this kind of session, a resourceful session. Today I have with me team of doctors, team of finest elite of doctors, practicing physicians at United States of America. Friends, USMLE has always been an inspiration to be the part of the world's most elitist and the most finest education system or the medical system of the world, right? So you have finest doctors, but yes, this whole process of cracking through USA, getting into USA, it is a long process. It comes with a lot of challenges. It comes with a lot of patience and also a very, very specific and very right mentorship. Friends, today I'm happy to announce I have with me a team of doctors, attending physicians in United States of America. All the doctors, they have taken their precious time just to share their experiences, how they have crossed all, you know, how they have passed on their Indian journey and they have landed into America. So friends, I'll start the session and I would like to welcome my respective doctors. I have with me Dr. Amar Qureshi. Dr. Amar Qureshi, he's an MS in orthopedic surgery from Bangalore Medical College and Research Institute in Bangalore, graduated 2015. Postdoctoral research fellowship from Marshall University in Huntington, West Virginia. He's done his MD in internal medicine from Eastern Howard Medical Center, University of California, Riverside School of Medicine, California, graduated 2021. Currently, Dr. Omar Qureshi, He's the chief resident of internal medicine residency program at Eastern Howard Health, affiliated with University of California, Riverside School of Medicine. Dr. Umar has done extensive research in internal medicine, gastroenterology, and orthopedics with publications, abstracts, and conference presentations all across the world. He's also worked as a faculty and academic hospital at Eastern Howard Medical Center, California. Dr. Umar has also a teaching experience and he's greatly tutoring students for medical education in USMLE Step 1, Step 2, CK, and CS. Dr. Umar, I would like to welcome you for this wonderful session. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Next, with me, I have <coughs> Dr. Uvesh Mansuri. Dr. Uvesh is MD and MPH. Dr. Uvesh Mansuri, he is MPH, Master of Public Health from ICAM School of Medicine at Mount Sinai, New York, graduated in 2017. MD Internal Residence, Medical Residency from MedStar Health Internal Medical Residency Program, affiliated to Georgetown University, graduate 2021. Dr. Uvesh has a research experience with multiple publications, 50 plus research papers, abstracts, and conference presentation in the field of pulmonology, critical care, and gastro in terminology. Dr. Umesh is currently working as attending physician at MedStar Good Samaritan Hospital, Department of Critical Care Medicine at Baltimore, Maryland, USA. Again, Dr. Umesh has a teaching experience of 100 plus medical students and residents. Dr. Umesh, thank you for sparing your precious time. Welcome to this session. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Uh, I have with me Dr. Srinivas Ashok Srinivasan. Dr. Srinivas is MD Internal Medicine Residency from MaxStar Health Baltimore program affiliated to Georgetown University graduated 2021. Currently working as attending physician at MaxStar Washington Hospital Center, Department of Medicine in Washington DC, USA. And also he is USMLE tutor at Alpan, New York for over 100 medical students and IMG is preparing for USMLE STEP program. Dr. Srinivas, I would like to welcome you for this session. Thank you so much for that introduction. Thank you, sir. And also, I have with me my esteemed guest, Dr. Urvish Patel. Dr. Urvish Patel has done his MPH Biostatistics Master in Public Health from ICLAN School of Medicine at Mount Sinai, New York, graduated 2015. Postdoctoral spoke epidemiology from 
ICANN School of Medicine in Mount Sinai, New York, co-founder and chief education officer, research update organization. He's also an experience of clinical research education of over 250 medical students, IMGs, and residents during a short span of four years. Dr. Urvesh is applauded with a lot of recognition. He's AHA Junior Investigator Award. He's got Stroke Minority Travel Grant, ANA Travel Awards, ISMMS Graduate School Travel Award, and Young Investigator Award in Clinical Cardiology and have featured by CDC, WHO, Practice Update, Consultant 360, and Medscape. Dr. Ovish Patel is also co-author of 140 plus research paper abstract and conference presentation with 700 citations. Oh, doctor, welcome, welcome Dr. Ovish to this session. Such a wonderful introduction, such a wonderful, such a rich experience that you are carrying to this platform. I'm so delighted, uh, Dr. Stu, you have on this session. Thank you for inviting us. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor. And finally, in the team, we have Dr. Shantanu Solanki. Uh, Dr. Shantanu is MPH from Eklan School of Medicine at Mount Sinai. He's a MD internal medical residency from New York Medical College at Westinger Medical Center, New York. Academic titles, he's assistant professor of hospital medicine at Ginsinger Commonwealth School of Medicine, Pennsylvania, attending hospital hospitalist at Guthrie Medical Center, Pennsylvania, and he's a lot of teaching experience of over 100 medical students and 100 internal family medicine residents during a short period of six years. Also, he's a co-author of First Aid Step 1, 2012, and 100 plus research paper. Dr. Shantanu Solanki, because of his uh, engagements, he's not able to make to the session, but yes, being an integral part of the session, I would like to welcome him as well into the session. And also, my esteemed guest, Mr. Sumesh Khandelwal. Mr. Sumesh Khandelwal is uh, representing, is Pan India representing Angeles University Foundation, the most prestigious and academically oriented university in Philippines. Angeles University Foundation is setting the bar high. There are many universities in uh, Philippines, but when it comes to academic nurturing, academic quality, peace of mind, the best, that is under the leadership, under the guidance of uh, Mr. Somesh Khandelwal. Sir, I would like to welcome you for this session, Mr. Somesh. Thank you, Anuji. Uh, sir, Mr. Somesh, you are the, yeah, thank you, thank you. So post this wonderful introduction, sir, let's come to the main topic and uh, the session. I am, the session is open for doctors. So my first question comes to Dr. Srinivas. Dr. Srinivas, uh, you know, when it comes to practicing United States of America, right? It comes with a lot of opportunities, a lot of benefits. There's a lifestyle, you know, aspiration a student look forward for, yeah. But also it comes with challenges and comparison. So, I mean, I would like you to please guide me in all the aspects, you know, how the medical education of USA in comparison with India, what are the rewards and recognition and the challenges that comes along with us? Thank you, Anaj. Yeah, that's a very loaded question. Uh, let me address that one at a time. Um, so as far as practicing in USA, as far as opportunities go, um, you know, it is a leading healthcare system in the world. Um, they make um, cutting edge, you know, research and research papers, guidelines are all dictated by a lot of medicine that's practiced here in the US. Um, we also have, um, you know, a lot of, um, uh, what do you say, ability to be uh, practicing elsewhere in the world. So if you are if you get a degree in the U.S., um, you know practicing elsewhere in the world becomes easier. Um, example like you can go to Dubai, you really don't need to take any additional exams. Um, you can practice in India, you get a better position just because uh, it's a much more widely recognized degree. Um, the ability to be published uh, in journals, um, you know, get recognized overall uh, by your peers in the medical community. I think that's a huge opportunity that you get here in the U.S. Um, as far as benefits go, um, you have great work-life balance. Um, you know, you have a good salary uh, to help support you, your family, and your lifestyle here in the U.S., um, it's a very good support system at work. So as far as, uh, you know, nurses, technicians, uh, pathologists, other consultants go, um, you know, they are all very helpful and they provide you with a good support system that you need to enjoy your work. So I think those are like the main um, benefits that I personally find great here in the U.S., 
Um, lifestyle wise, again, like I said, you have a great work life balance. You get to dictate your time um, at work, you know, how many days you want to work, uh, how many days you would like to take off. Um, and you get a lot of time off. Um, you know, they give you your schedule in advance. It's almost a year in advance. You can pick your schedule. You know when you're going to be off. You can plan your vacations. You can really plan your life um, based on your schedule. And once you're done from work, you know, you're done. You don't have to think about uh, what's happening at work because you have colleagues that are very well trained to take care of uh, your patients. So um, definitely lifestyle wise, it is more suitable. Um, you know, practicing in US has major advantages. Um, challenges, yes, uh, there are definitely challenges to practicing here in the US. Uh, one is uh, adjusting to a new culture and country. Um, things run somewhat differently over here. Things are more organized, things are somewhat systematic. Um, some people have issues getting visas. Uh, some people have issues, um, you know, Everybody has sort of, you know, financial issues, things like that. So those are some challenges that uh, people can face. Exams are obviously a challenge. Uh, you know, getting used to this work environment and the culture at work here is also a challenge. But I think all of those are easily overcome um, if you approach it in the right manner. Um, you said something about comparison. Uh, you know, comparing practice here with uh, practice back in India. Um, I would say definitely there's a better work culture here. Um, people are very professional. Um, you know, even when you interact with your patients, you realize that there is a lot of uh, this mutual respect uh, between a doctor and a patient. Um, you know, uh, you have, um, again, like I said, the support system really comes into play here because, um, you know, you don't have to overstep your comfort zone to take care of a patient. If you're not comfortable doing something, uh, you can always call in a specialist and they are more than happy to take care of it. Um, you don't get paid here based on referrals. So you can refer a patient to a cardiologist, say for example, or a neurologist, and they're more than happy to come see them and provide you with their insight regarding how to take care of the patient. Um, I, I really think that to sum it all up, you know, practicing here in the US has, uh, it's, it's been a great experience. Um, it's, it's a world of difference as far as practicing in, uh, India versus, uh, us as far as lifestyle goes for sure. Um, I really think I'm able to give time to my family and my friends, uh, myself enjoy, uh, what I like to do, uh, and, you know, pick up hobbies and things like that while also being able to work, get that satisfaction of being a doctor and, uh, taking care of, uh, my patients here in this country. Great. Thank you, Dr. Srinivas, for enlightening us on this uh, basic aspect of education and the lifestyle. Coming to the second part, I would like to take this uh, question uh, to Dr. Uvesh. Dr. Uvesh, as uh, we discussing USMLE, so there's a pathway. And, uh, you know, my question comes like what all it needs to be done, right? What are the steps a person or a student or a medical aspirant needs to follow? so as to see himself or herself in the American education system. <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Anand. That's uh, Thank you for the question. Uh, so yeah, actually, uh, first and foremost, uh, the USMLE pathway, it's a very long process. Uh, first of all, the students need to graduate from accredited medical school, irrespective of anywhere in the world. Uh, then if you want to be a practicing physician in U.S., the law says you have to be trained in U.S., at least for three years. So to get that training, to get your postgraduate training, students have to finish the, the USMLE exam, the United States Medical Licensing Exam. Uh, it, it consists of three steps. USMLE Step 1, which kind of focuses on more non-clinical, basic uh, uh, medical subjects like anatomy, physiology, biochemistry, uh, and then step two, uh, which consists of two parts. The first is the clinical knowledge exam, which consists of basically the clinical subjects like medicine, pediatrics, OBGYN, and surgery. Uh, so there have been some recent changes uh, in the use of step exams. Uh, the first thing is uh, before the pandemic hit, they used to have clinical skill exam, which used to be the second part of the step two exam. Uh, but because of the, the COVID 
the ECFMG have stopped conducting that exam and instead the students have to take uh, OET exam, which is basically an occupational English language testing exam. Uh, it's a very, it's a similar exam that uh, students take when they go to UK when they apply for lab. Uh, then the last step is step three. Uh, you don't require it before you apply for residency, but it is recommended because uh, uh, if, if you don't take it before residency, you'd have to take it mandatory before the end of the first year of your residency training after you match. Uh, other than that, there are other uh, important uh, mandatory stuff that students need to do other than taking the exam before they can apply for residency and interview and match into a program of their choice. Uh, most of the programs, they require at least three to six months of US clinical experience. So basically students have to rotate in different hospitals all across the US, wherever they, for that they have to apply. And then they have to get a certain time limit or number of weeks that they can work in a hospital under an attending physician, uh, shadow them, get some experience. And eventually at the end of the rotation, the attendings, depending uh, how their work was, the students get a letter of recommendation. So I say programs require minimum three months because you need to work at least one month with an attending to get that letter because that's how they evaluate the performance, how their medical knowledge is, how, what's their baseline, and if they will be fit to uh, be trained into a US medical residency program. So when you apply for residency, you have to have at least three letter of recommendations, which is the minimum. And I think maximum is four. Uh, if you do not have those, your application shows as incomplete. Now, given that the US family is very, very competitive, uh, people from all over the world, they apply to get trained in US. So there is very slim chance of error. So students usually have their uh, profile, you know, overall built up complete before they apply for instance. So these are the main uh, gist that you need to do before you apply. Uh, there are some other non-mandatory, but they are kind of sort of mandatory that students are required to. Um, given in US, you, uh, you, uh, if you're getting trained in medical specialty, you have to be versed with the research. Um, so it is uh, a lot of programs they do uh, consider if you have some research profile. So a lot of students, they do work as the, some, some students do like postdoctoral fellowship. Um, like I myself did like a master's in public health and I worked on a lot of outcomes based research. And that's how I built up my profile. And that kind of helped me a lot to have an extra degree and have the research on my CV. And it kind of helps the candidate to stand apart from thousands of applications the, uh, the program gets. So after all of these things are done, you apply and then you get interviews. There is a certain timeline. So every year in September, uh, second week of September, the application cycle opens and you need all of these things ready. Then there is an electronic residency application software where students make their account they upload all the documents, all their uh, CV profile, everything is up uploaded. And then they send out the applications to how many programs they want. And then the whole interview cycle goes on up till December or January latest. And then you get the results in March of that year. And then you start your resident training from July. So this is kind of a brief overview of what the students need to go through. Uh, I mean, obviously there are a lot of minute details in each and every step of the way. Uh, and I don't think we have that kind of time to go over like, you know, it's like every step would be like an hour session. Uh, but basically this is the basic gist of what it takes to get through the US assembly pathway programs. So very elaborately and very categorically explained Dr. Ovish. Thank you for explaining it for our audience. Uh, but the process that you've explained is an enormous process, right? And this whole journey, a student or a medical aspirant, serious people, they would like to go for a uh, like the doctors are here, they have a US family pathway program, whereby the doctors are taking aspirants step by step and they're guiding them for cracking out the US family and guiding at every, every level. So over here, my next question comes to Dr. Amar. Dr. Omar, this USMLE pathway program, how are you orienting this pathway program? 
how are what are the steps that we are taking and how is it really helping the students in reaching out to the final destination of USM. So um, as part of the a mentorship program, we are a part of the uh, International uh, Foreign Medical Graduate Education Institute. So, um, you know, we basically divide our uh, course into five aspects. One is uh, USMLE mentor, mentorship counseling. We will train students in uh, step one, in giving the exams, a step one exam, the step two CK exam, and the OET, uh, and step three. So we'll be giving them courses. Um, the next step is also we'll be helping them with some clinical research, getting them involved and uh, in some clinical research and getting them involved in uh, gaining U.S. experience before they apply for residency. Uh, and then, you know, we'll also train them in uh, giving interviews and preparing and helping, helping them and guiding them in preparing their applications. Uh, so what our mentorship counseling is as part of IFMGE is that you know, we'll provide one-on-one -on -one counseling with students who will come to us uh, to guide them through the process of uh, you know, um, the timeline and what they need in their application, you know, what, which candidate is the best for which of our programs. Uh, and then we'll guide each and every step of their journey from beginning from the USMLE exams. Uh, we'll, you know, we'll try to prepare their whole package and their pathway, uh, which includes you know, making their, uh, preparing their externships, preparing their applications for uh, uh, for, uh, for uh, the residency application. For, you know, we'll also be tutoring them with, uh, with, with, live, and on, with live online and recorded sessions. Uh, we'll cover all the subject matter for the step one, the step two, and the step three exams, as well as the OET exams. Uh, you know, we'll incorporate USMLE, uh, the question banks, the standardized question banks, and, you know, uh, give the students some unique uh, uh, exam taking strategies uh, and, you know, just to evaluate them and just to help them uh, score very well in the exam so that to make them more competitive candidates. Uh, the next step is also, you know, we'll help them uh, gain some U.S., uh, some valuable U.S. medical experience in the United States, which is a very important aspect of their application. Uh, in this way, you know, they get to network with physicians in the United States, get some letter recommendations, which is very mandatory for them uh, to apply for residency. Um, in this way, they'd also get an opportunity to see firsthand, you know, how medicine is practiced in the United States. Um, then, you know, another, uh, a large chunk of our program is that we'll also be involving them in research. Uh, so we have a six months uh, research certification course. Uh, where, you know, we'll uh, train them and guide them in how to, uh, you know, uh, be excellent researchers and make them more competitive candidates for residency. Um, and, you know, overall, uh, by when their application is ready, you know, we help them make their application. We help them, uh, you know, uh, if, prepare them for the interviews. If they get any, we prepare them to make their personal statements and we, you know, prepare the whole, we help them guide them to prepare the whole application uh, and, you know, give them like one-on-one -on -one interview sessions so that, you know, they can excel this whole process of um, the USMLE pathway. Wonderful. I'm really, uh, I'm really excited about this uh, program. And definitely, doctors, we would like to tell, you know, in our next session, we would like to elaborate this program in detail with, you know, the kind of a structural presentation so that students will We'll get to know about, uh, you know, the step-by-step -step thing in, you know, with a better clarity, but yes, well explained. All this discussion, you know, when I interact with our students, there is a very, very, very strong question or a very, uh, you know, kind of a general question that comes. USMLE is very tough. It's very difficult. It's very complex. You know, is it really worth, I mean, will I be in a position to sustain that kind of momentum? My question comes to Dr. Orvesh. Dr. Orvesh, you have mentored so many students while you are going through your profile. You have mentored so many students in such a short span of time. These questions may be also coming to you. And you have also nurtured your journey from India to with so many research papers, such a, uh, I'll say, elaborated profile. Dr. Orvesh, please enlighten our students a very baseline question, how difficult it is, what, what is the right way of looking into it? Thank you, Anuj. First of all, thanks for this opportunity. 
Now, <clears throat> I completely agree with you that plenty of time people are having this question, students are having this questions that um, what is the time we should quit? Okay, should I quit or not? And uh, probably uh, in the last four years, I have mentored more than 200 uh, students and probably every single student asked the same question or we ourselves asked this question two or three times during the journey at least, okay? Because every single phase, there is a challenge. It's uh, We are talking about challenge, first of all, for exams. Second, visa challenge. Third, interview prep challenge, adjusting to new culture and new healthcare system. That is also a big challenge. And everything, if work very well, then you have to pass through rigorous interview process, unlikely like other country, like India and other developing country, we are having it. Very good system where I can say you, you give the exam, you score well, you whatever branch you deserve that you get it. If you don't deserve, sit again one more year, study well, and uh, your parents will be supporting you. You are studying in the library 12, 15, 20 hours a day till you prove yourself a good suitable candidate. Unlikely to that way, in US, we are having only one time chance to give step one. If you pass, you cannot take this exam again. What does it mean? That means if you, if you pass with low score, that is career is done. That is first challenge is done. I cannot say the career is done. It's a long game. One factor will not decide uh, the whole life of your journey, but still that is a one chance you're getting it. On top of that, even though here in the in India, traditional family, our parents support us so that we can study in US. Many of us, while we are studying, US family has to do some other work too. Like we used to teach some students working somewhere else. Some people are Uber driver. Many other things they used to do beside cooking, cleaning, and so many stuff for themselves. Okay, so it's a huge challenging uh, journey. Um, is it worth it? It is completely worth uh, pursuing this journey. It rather than um, looking into like an end perspective that you know um, I want to match. That's the only one thing I want to see. Then you are not going to enjoy this journey. It's it's a better you enjoy every moment of this journey. Like enjoy when you are studying steps. Enjoy once you are doing rotation. Enjoy healthcare. Enjoy new tradition, new culture, new complete new system. You are going to have international students, you are going to have uh, cultural amalgamation, or I can say exchange, culture exchange. So that is all these things are enjoyable. But if you think, oh my God, it's three steps, uh, six to seven mean publication or median publication number you require to apply, four month of rotation, four LOR, and two year of duration, that is like challenging when you think every single thing at the same moment. So what I uh, focus uh, majority of the time that I make sure that we uh, not only um, uh, encourage student and making sure that their mental, um, I, can, I can say to be precise that mental encouragement rather than having the, uh, because everyone is expert, everyone is hardworking and that's why they're doctor, right? But the problem which we do not have it is, um, dealing with the time issues, uh, struggling with the management uh, deal with the all surrounding environment and patients. Majority of the time patient is missing. So it's a journey of two and a half years. So 50% people lose when it comes to patient, not hard work. Um, and if you, uh, let's say if you pass through this journey and let's say if you mess up somewhere, mess up in step one score or mess up in step two score or anywhere, then definitely there are multiple backup options to improve your score and get back to your uh, game, right? People are doing MPH, uh, people are doing postdoc fellowship, people are doing multiple rotation, multiple research. Uh, I, you can ask any one of us before we match also, we have plenty number of publications so that we get the interviews, right? So uh, this is something uh, very unique uh, regarding to uh, our IFMGE team, I feel, when uh, definitely there are multiple uh, multiple agencies are there, multiple people are there who can help you in a private way or in a in an institutional way. But what we believe is not only we prepare you very well, but let's say if you don't make it up to the standard level, still we will help you 
to reach to that standard level back to the game in a shorter span of the time. For example, I did two year of MPH, one year of postdoc. Now, uh, uh, am I going to suggest someone to do MPH and improve their profile and spending three year and $60,000? No, but after passing through this three year of journey, I realized what are the loopholes, what are the connection method, what are the way we can, we can utilize the same one year of experience and we can push everything, the condensed experience in that one year so the people can save money as well as time. And we can get back to the team uh, or I can say get back to the line timeline uh, without wasting uh, energy, money resources, and of course, the patients, because more you struggle, more uh, patients you are going to lose. And um, so that is the challenging thing. But here we are making, we are going to make sure that step scores is not going to be only deciding factor. In fact, step one score, now they are not going to consider from next year, it's going to be pass and fail. CS exam, clinical skill exam, they removed it. So they also know that these all are burnout math uh, thing and then it's challenging thing. So we are making sure how you are going to get best letter of recommendation by doing best rotations, how you can involve in university program in a, in a research institute so that you can do the research with university program and get letter of support so that you can, you can pursue your career even with the uh, mediocre score. Uh, definitely higher, more the merrier, but it's not necessary everyone score the best, you know? <laughs> yeah, uh, so, so that is the way we are going to train you for overall point of view. We will, we will fix you, we'll, we'll make sure we'll introduce you and we'll put you in the team of the physician who's practicing in US. So they will make sure that uh, they will work on your overall profile. They will train you um, for interviews and how to behave with all of this uh, process and then help you to get into the system. Um, even with something is going plus or minus. So that is uh, my take home messages. It requires a lot of patience beside little bit of hard work and intelligence. But patience is most important thing and we are going to make sure how we can uh, implant all the small, small uh, important uh, key aspects in your life and in your career. Yeah. Doctors, it is all about the connect. You know, mentorship is not about uh, taking through the pathway or an official or a former way of, uh, you know, program structure. It is all about one-on-one -on -one connect, right? So it is a Guru Shishya Parampara. And when a student, because first of all, he's aspiring. So that aspiration is very valuable, right? And then he's looking up to you, you know, why he, he'll connect because he looks, you are all dynamic. You have recently achieved all your accolades, you are not in a middle age group kind of a thing. So they very correlate ki some year, four years down the line, how can be I, how can be a Dr. Amar or Dr. Srinivas or Dr. Urvesh or Dr. Uvesh, right? So just that pathway, and I feel the kind of exuberance and the excitement and the energy that, uh, you know, you have with, with, you know, with this whole pathway, certainly this will, this will, you know, give a lot of confidence to the students. And as you mentioned, students leave patience. It is not about hard work. Hard work, so when they are preparing for need, they're already hard working. Then they're able to sustain that thing, right? It is all about patience and a lot of students, they doesn't get the you know, right pathway. As you said, so many other branches are there. So many other avenues are there, right? Which they're not aware of. They only know this is USMLE and this is our, this is the journey. So this way, if we are enlightening them, certainly it's going to give them a big, big perspective. Uh, next, I'll invite Mr. Somesh, Mr. Somesh, uh, representing Angeles University, very prestigious university uh, in the education system, medical education system of uh, Philippines, the Philippines. Uh, sir, I would like uh, to, you know, uh, share your vision of how this whole university is orienting students towards this extreme level of, uh, I'll say, contemporary education, right? So how university and how you are taking the efforts so as to, you know, plan this whole pathway. Yeah, thank you, Anuj, and thank you, team of doctors. So this USMLE pathway program is uh, something which is uh, which is the most demanded and aspired program so far in every uh, medical aspirant in India or abroad. Lot of students, parents were keep me asking that, sir, I want, uh, my kid want to do USMLE and want to do post-graduation in US. 
So we were also doing something like uh, we were also trying to connect with Kaplan and other institutes, and they have started programs also in our university. But somewhere we were not able to connect with them. Like, you know, like uh, the, those people are tutors. They were not, um, they, they had not accomplished this by the, that way, the Indian student or a South Asian student, a medical graduate, go to go with that journey. Somebody who is born and brought up in US and teaching a Indian student to how to cope up with how to crack USMLE. So that will be a different thing. And an Indian is who has already gone through with all those, those things which is required to become an attending physician and coming to Indian students. So that 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 is the USMLE pathway program. Okay. And why your, you ask me that why we have launched it with Angeles University Foundation. So it, it is very simple. You have very much rightly said that Angeles University is the place where academic and practical knowledge for uh, a medical student comes first. Mm -hmm. And the first reason to choose Angeles University Foundation to launch this program among Indian students and the local Filipino students is this that that is PASCO recognized and uh, ECFMG who regulates IMGs, international med medical graduates into uh, US. So they clearly mentioned that if you are coming from Philippines, your medical school or university should be accredited by PASCO. So this is the first reason that why we have started this in at AUF. Second most important thing is this, the students who are studying at AUF are of very, very different kind of uh, attitude because the, the, if you see uh, foreign graduates who are going outside India, Indian students who are going outside India to study medicine. So they are worried about MCI screen test or FMG screen test. And they keep trying all the five, six years to do that, okay, to find the solution of those MCQs and practicing that FMG exam. But I have seen that the students who are studying at AUF, they don't, they really don't care about FMG because they know that when they are studying it in the, this university. So FMG is not the challenge, but the challenge they should take is USMLE. So students inspired me actually, my students who are at AUF has inspired me to find a right team uh, to launch this USMLE pathway program among them. And that's why we are here today at this stage when we have great doctors team with us who are ready, who are equipped to run this program uh, and uh, pull those students who are really ready to do hard work, give their 100% uh, for this uh, expedition. And definitely uh, they will be in US as an attending physician uh, because uh, this people who are guiding them have done this by their own. So they know that what need not to be done. They know that is the most important thing I found that it is not like that AUF student were not going to US. AUF student were going to US earlier also, they were cracking USMLE also, but the, uh, they were doing experiments by their own. Okay. and. When you are doing experiments, so your success rate obviously will be very low, okay? And you, your, your time taking, your investment, your hard work will, will take this more. But when you have people like this, people, doctor sitting with us right now, when we have people like this, so you know you are focused and you need to do only those things which they are guiding to you. So you do not waste money. You do not require to waste your time in experimenting a lot of things. Mm -hmm. So here we are at the right right place with right people. Angelus is the right platform for USMLE pathway program. These doctors are the right uh, people who can take this mentorship ahead. And the students at AUF are the right students with, the, with whom we can run this program to get them really successful. So it's completely a win-win situation for everyone and everybody wants to see the success and we have the right ingredients with us. This is what I would like to say right now. <laughs> I think uh, this is one of the most uh, resourceful session that I have done till date. 
and uh, when i say resourceful means a lot of people they have inspiration they have small inspiration big inspiration and you guys are real models real time because in india we talk a lot about usmle and to be honest usmle is the hi highest miss sold program in india also people are selling caribbean islands countries small small countries with will uh, devastating infrastructures with the you know fake promising of uh, getting into internship into usa and all and all so there are a lot of uh, things hanging around but yes when we conduct sessions like these and we have people or doctors who are there then it speaks for itself right the pathway got gets cleared the students are mentored in the right direction and to be really honest there is no shortcut to success uh, and this session has really enlightened us you have categorically shared your experiences dr amar dr shrinivas you explained it very well and dr urvish the basic question that i have asked with you is it really you know difficult to sustain that momentum dr uvesh you have also explained it very well how it comes like aspiring to be a us what are the rewards that comes right and but yes uh, there are certain hard works to that so with this i think this is all this session will go very long there will be a lot of visibility for this session and uh, a lot of inspiration for you people so thank you very much for sparing your precious schedules amongst your uh, you know so as to for our audience definitely and i would definitely like to conduct these sessions again because uh, you know students will demand this session this is a first session but yes this could be a recurring session so i'm sure uh, doctors you can spare your time in the future as well <laughs> yes if you are ready to pay in dollars per minute <laughs> <laughs> no we are we are to help uh, you know it's uh, it was one of our common uh, motives for the entire team that you know like we want to help students because we have been through the process and we know how hard it was and what all that we all have been through and the thing is usmle is not like a common journey if you ask every single one of us we have gone through totally different process other than giving the step exams each one of us has a different story to tell so given all of our experiences you know we thought that it is something that will make us happy and Uh, helping the fellow students and hopefully they also get the same success that uh, we all have dr shrinivas your uh, closing closing lines please <laughs> yeah absolutely like dr uve said the whole reason we started this was uh, to help students i really think that uh, more than helping students this is something that they are going to be future physicians here in the us they are going to be our colleagues uh, they are all going to be on the same standing as us uh, some day and that's what we aspire to see for uh, our students and everybody who's on this medical journey it's it's really difficult it's very hard but we hope to call them our colleagues one day and uh, you know practice with them here in the us that would be wonderful and i'm glad uh, you put this all together and we're more than happy to answer any questions that they may have and uh, you know we are working on getting our website up and uh, you know they should be able to reach out to us whenever they want to. Uh, Dr. Uvesh, a last uh, closing remark from your side as well, please. Uvesh, or Uvesh? Oh, me? Okay. Yeah, Dr. Uvesh. Uh, yes. <laughs> so yeah, the I always believe that um, um, hard work with hard work and intelligence, you require persistence, and we will teach you how to. Uh, develop that here plus we will be here in each and every moment of your journey and we'll we'll show you how to enjoy this journey rather than uh, burn out through it and definitely um i can say that uh, physicians majority of the time they know it very well that difficult moments in the life define who we are and and or maybe who they are so definitely it's going to be difficult journey but it's going to be very enjoyable and we'll make it possible together thank you thank you and uh, last definitely dr amar you always have been a silent doctor but yes <laughs> i would i would like to take you on final uh, you know remarks before i'll uh, we'll uh, take the session up 
Uh, yeah, I, I agree with my, my, my fellow physicians here. Um, you know, we'll just, all we want to do as a part of IFMG is take all our experience and, you know, in coming to the United States and using all the experience, what we have gathered to help future doctors come here to the United States and build a successful career so that they can save time. And, you know, we have put in our time and it's so that we can save their time and coming here and practicing as soon as possible. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Somesh. Thank you, Dr. Omar Gureshi, Dr. Srinivas, Dr. Urvesh Patel, and Dr. Uvesh Mansuri for sparing your precious, precious time. I would again thank you very much from the bottom of my heart so, so as to guide us and enlighten us and wish to look forward for more enlightening sessions in the future. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Dr.